Well, hey everybody, I want to welcome you to Highlands today. And uh, what we're doing through this particular series is we're bringing some of our global strategic partners. Uh, and in the digital world, we can bring them right into your home or we can bring them right into our physical location. Today, you had the opportunity to hear from Pastor Wahid and Lila. They're just an incredible couple that's doing an amazing work in all of our Middle Eastern countries reaching thousands and thousands and thousands. We've seen over 800,000 people become a disciple of Jesus through their work and their ministry, and we partner with them. So uh, we're grateful for Wahid and Lila and continue to pray for them and cheer them on. Uh, last week, uh, if you were here, you know that we talked about being partnered with Pastor Daniel Thomas at Community Church in Mountain City and Pastor Deo all the way in Tanzania, Africa at Mount Kilimanjaro. Today, we're sort of highlighting our strategic partner in Lebanon, Virginia, Pastor Tim Brown, and he'll be with me just in a minute, and also Pastor Wahid, who has a ministry in Lebanon in the Middle East. And we were able through his ministry when this terrific explosion came to the port and devastated the city of Lebanon and so many displaced families. We were able to feed hundreds and hundreds of families because of your generosity and our partnership with Pastor Wahid. You know, um, Wahid talked about the pandemic. And I think it's safe to say that when COVID-19 began to spread across the globe, uh, just as in other challenging times before, our work as a church did not stop. Our mission and vision are still moving forward for God. And God is, what he's done through this season, even it's been a season of uncertainty, is he's given us so many unbelievable opportunities, more than ever before, to join him. Years ago, I remember reading a study called uh, Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. And Blackaby made this statement, I never forgot it, said, go find where God is working and join God. And honestly, church, what we're doing through this whole series of Difference Maker is we're just finding where God's working, whether it be in our community, our region, our parts around the world, and we, as a church, have decided we're going to join him. And God has blessed our socks off for doing that. I mean, it's been just incredible what God's done. Every year, for the first three weeks of November, we do a Difference Maker series. We ask you to partner with us and allow us to continue to make a difference together. And we look back on what God's been doing, sort of a session where we can brag on God, and then we look forward, and this year, so many of you have asked, what does the future of our church look like? And these three weeks, we're trying to give you a glimpse into where we think God is leading us. So last week, if you were here, we talked about what God's doing in our community. You remember we set out by 2023 to serve 30,000 people, and here's what you guys have done. We've already served 43,000 individual people in our local community. So golly, you know, I, you know, I guess my faith was weak when we set that vision, but thank you, thank you, thank you. You have been the hands and feet of Jesus in our local communities. Now today, I'm excited uh, to begin to share with you what God is doing in our region. And this was something that I had thought about before, but honestly, God brought a bigger vision my way than I ever really dreamed. So we have a theme verse for our Difference Maker series, and I want to remind you of that verse. Paul gives it to the church at Rome in Romans chapter 1, verse 8, and this is what he says. Let me say first that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith in him is being talked about all over the world. Highlands, your faith is being talked about all over the world. Now, I believe that we can all agree that things have changed locally uh, through this pandemic, regionally. Matter of fact, our world has changed. And when this pandemic began to hit home with us, you know, we, uh, we, had, we were fortunate. We had a great online team, and many of you are watching online today or television, but this is what our team did. We went and we began to meet, and we evaluated everything we did, and we made lots of adjustments. And today... Uh, Hundreds and hundreds of you are joining us on television. I never thought I would be a television preacher, but hey, our team here at the church did an amazing job. We've got some awesome tech folks, 
and we were able to create a television program to keep you connected to the church. And then our online team, man, those guys have done amazing because the vast majority of our church are still joining us in online services or television. So thank you for staying connected and thank you for staying a part of all that God's doing. And even in the midst of all the uncertainty, I think it's imperative that, guys, we remain clear as a church. We will not retreat in this hour of uncertainty. It's not who we are. We're not going to throw in the towel. We're not going to raise the white flag of surrender because of this looming virus threat. We have made it through past crises, economic recessions, wars, natural disasters. We've made it through terrorist attacks when our country looked like what the future would be. None of these things have ever destroyed our work together because the church of Jesus Christ is alive and well. So I want to take a minute and I just want to remind you where we're headed. We're going to join God to continue to make a difference in our community and our world. Now, why would we do that? Well, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Notice what Jesus says. He says, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. That's our local communities. We looked at last week. Judea and Samaria. It's our region that we'll talk about today and to the ends of the earth. When we say make a difference, how can we all make a difference? We can do three things. We can all pray. We can all serve and we can all give. And I want to challenge you to consider helping us in all three of those areas. We talk about our community. We're really talking about Highlands Fellowship Church, one church in multiple locations where we're going to continue to serve our community and we're going to continue to reach just once. When we talk about the world, we're really talking about our network. We have a regional network and we also have a global network. And we're trying to highlight that through all three weeks of the Difference Maker series, where we're going to continue to train pastors all over the world. We're going to train ministerial leaders and develop them through HF College regionally. And we're going to look to launch new locations and form strategic partners, a new term that we'll introduce to you today and help you understand what God's doing in that. Today, we highlight what God is doing in our region. I've invited Pastor Tim Brown, pastor of Gracewood Community Church, to come and be with us and share with us what God's doing regionally through our network. So Pastor Tim is going to come to the stage and we're just going to have a conversation. And I want to tell you a little bit about him as he comes. I have known him since he was five years old. All right. His family started coming to the church that I pastored when he was just a little tight. He had given his life to Jesus. I watched him all throughout his high school career, and he was a star athlete. He was quarterback of the football team, point guard of the basketball team, shortstop on the baseball team. He was sort of a local town hero, won the Pappy Thompson Award that year, and, uh, you know, just had this platform of influence. God called him to go to Bluefield College, and there he began a business career and uh, played baseball. And then he met this girl. And all of a sudden, she's at Liberty University, and he starts telling me, I feel like God's calling me to Liberty. And I'm like, oh, yeah? Why? And uh, he went, and he and Meg have been married now. They have four children and just a beautiful family. And while he was at Liberty, God got a hold of his heart, and God called him to plant a church in my hometown. And I'm excited about it. And, you know, just to be honest with you, I was a little bitter about it, too. So let me tell you the story that many of you may not know. So my mom attends Gracewood Community Church. Tim is, is my mom's pastor. And uh, she decided, because they started in the high school, she had some land, which I thought would be my inheritance, and she had some land that she thought would be a great place to build a new church in her hometown. And so she called me one day and she said, you know what, son, I've decided I'm going to give land to build the church. I said the the land that you were giving me for inheritance, you know, mom, I want you to live a long time, but I'd sort of, you know, I got five kids. Let me just remind you, you know, I was thinking about maybe there'd be a day I might retire. Well, honey, I think God, you can't outgive God. You've always said you can't outgive God. So I've decided I've already signed it over to the church and she did. So I have a lot invested in Pastor Tim and Gracewood Community Church, but they've done an amazing job. This church started uh, how many how how long ago? Twelve years. A little 12, over Twelve years, years ago, and they started in the high school, 
And they quickly grew beyond the capacity of the high school, built their own building, and it's one of the fastest growing churches in the state of Virginia before COVID hit, of course. Uh, it's well resourced. He's been able to reach influential leaders in that community. And to say that I'm proud of him is an understatement. I am proud of him. I've invested a lot in him, and uh, I'm so thankful for what he's doing. So here, uh, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago, uh, he approached me with an idea. He's been a friend of Highlands for a long time about a regional network. So I want you to share with our people sort of how God put that on your heart. Well, um, as you know, you have invested a lot in me as well as others from our church. And uh, I was just so thankful about the upbringing that I had through our church. And, and when I think about that, I think a lot about the numbers of pastors who have not had any investment in their lives. I remember hearing your story where when you started out, you asked a few people to invest in you and they really wouldn't. And you, <laughs> you had very little investment. And one of the reasons that you've invested in me and so many others is because of the lack of investment that you've had in your life. And so my, my story is a little bit different than that because of you, because of the investment that you've made in my life. Um, I see that as, as hugely beneficial. And so I know that I wouldn't be at the place I am today uh, serving in the church that I am without the investment that you've had. I wouldn't be in ministry today probably without, <laughs> without your investment, without you telling me that it was God's will for my life to go into ministry, which God did show that it was His will. It wasn't just Alan's will. It was God's will as well. <laughs> but um, but it, it was really, uh, God put it on my heart because of the investment that you made in my life to pay it forward to other people and, and it, just, it just breaks my heart to see pastors lonely, you know? Mm -hmm. It breaks my heart to see them out there on an island and, and to be doing life kind of by themselves. Uh, I love the church. The church has been such a huge part of my life. So many of my friends have come from the church and the investment in my life has come from the church. And so uh, I see as I read scripture that Jesus Christ loves his church as well. And, and we are to love the church the way that he loves the church. It's the bride of Christ. We're to love it. And, and I know sometimes we get frustrated with church, but, uh, and I do too. Look, as a pastor, I get frustrated with church as well. But we are called to love the church. And it absolutely breaks my heart to see the church struggling. And so often churches struggle whenever their pastors struggle. And so I think it's very important. One of the re reasons for the regional network is to care for, to encourage, and to challenge pastors who are going through difficult times, who may be out there on a limb, who may be from churches that have just one staff member, maybe two, maybe three, something like that. And uh, we, can, we can help to provide care and resources to them, um, the sharing of resources and ideas. Uh, it's really exciting to see how that's happened over the last little while. But, but I also want pastors to stay in the game. I mean, there, there are huge numbers of pastors. The statistics for pastors who are leaving the ministry, it's just devastating to me. And, and it hurts my heart. I know it hurts the, the heart of God. And so uh, I, I think that, you know, if we can somehow care for them, if we can somehow build them up and continue to encourage them, continue to challenge them. Many, many pastors who even attended seminary feel unqualified or, or unable to fulfill, unprepared to, mm -hmm. to lead the church that they're part of. And that's devastating to me as well. And so if there's a way that we can help with that, I want to. Mm -hmm. And so creating some sort of regional network that we can bring pastors together, have conversations that are real and that are deep and, and that you know, you can kind of remove the pastor hat for just a second and you can, you can speak with uh, just a realness that you may not be able to speak with the people in your congregation about. You don't feel the pressures of being perfect all the time. You can take that hat off. You can have a real conversation with another pastor who understands, who gets it, who has been there. And, and I think that, that is, it is something that we continue to create space for and want to continue to create space for as well. Yeah, so Tim brought this idea to me and we began to sort of chart what that area might look like. And we thought probably Blacksburg, Galax, that particular area would be our region north. Uh, we have, of course, Pastor Cameron, Pastor Mark down in Johnson City. So Pastor Cameron lives in Jonesboro, so we went to Jonesboro to the south. And then over to Wise and then Pastor Daniel down in Mountain City. So that sort of encompasses the region. And then we begin to just look, really, Tim did this because we didn't have staff to be able to do this, and he took it upon his own, and he began to make the initial invites. 
uh, to pastors and sort of share with them up and down the region, hey, this is what we're wanting to do. Would you guys want to get together? We'll meet at Highlands and we'll just keep each other in the game, cheer people on, and it'll be a place of confidence where you can share. And golly, we've been doing this now for a little over a year. And the first time, I don't know, we had maybe 20 or so pastors join us and it continues to grow. So I think it's really one of the best kept secrets that we have at Highlands because this is not a Highlands thing. This is really a kingdom thing. And Tim leads this for us, you know, and he's a pastor of Gracewood Community, which is part of our network. But, uh, it, you know, it's not a Highlands thing. So in the old days, us here at Highlands, we thought we need to put campuses in the whole entire region. And we'd have one church in all these multiple locations. And really what we saw God doing, especially through pandemic, was we found a lot of churches in our communities and in our region that was a lot like Highlands. And rather than having to go and put something new and try to resource that, uh, Tim helped me understand, how about partnering with us and we'll be better together and we'll grow together and it'll be a kingdom thing rather than an islands thing. And I would just tell all of you here that God has really supernaturally blessed our regional network in an incredible way. And I think it will continue to grow and expand. What do you think the future looks like in our network? Have you ever thought about that? I, I have thought a lot about it. And I, th I think the, the network has the potential to really impact the region and the world. Because what I think will happen is, as we continue to share ideas and share resources together, um, I think that we'll start to have like minds. You know, uh, the vision and the missions, those things will come together. And, and I think we'll start to see the world in similar ways. And so when we think about Wahid in the Middle East and Northern Africa, when we think about uh, Joel and in Pakistan, we think about those in Ivory Coast and South Africa, Tony and those guys, I, I think a lot about, uh, about the folks who, who we have globally as partners as well. And I can really see those coming together to serve a common purpose, a, a similar vision, similar mission. And, and I believe that it has potential to really impact uh, the kingdom and our world, fulfilling the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. And it's just uh, really, really exciting. I know, I know for us, when we decided to join Highlands as a strategic partner, uh, we, we're just ecstatic about it because it gives us an opportunity to to expand our influence, to be part of something that's so much bigger than Gracewood Community Church. It's just so exciting to us to get beyond ourselves and tell a bigger story. And I just, it, it just blows me away when I think about what God is doing through, through Highlands, through Gracewood, around the world, through the, the global strategic partners. And, and I think about the opportunity for more regional partners to come together, to have like minds, and to really continue to share the gospel all throughout the world. Yes, yeah, so uh, what began to happen as we launched the regional network, you can be a part of the regional network, just pastor, and we have lots of different denominations. We cheer you on and encourage you and pat you on the back. And Tim sort of, he always gives the agenda for the meetings and we meet at least quarterly. And, and it doesn't really matter. We just want to cheer you on. But what began to take place is there were certain churches that we had more of a connection with when we shared about our mission and vision and then Tim at Gracewood, Pastor Daniel at Mountain City, Pastor Scott up in Galax said, hey, we would like to align a little bit more than just be a network partner. And we came up with this term strategic partner where they align with us as a church on mission and vision, which is like Tim said, the great commandment, great commission that Jesus gave. And together we help everyone move forward to fulfill what God's doing in our region and around the world. And to be a part of that with not only our fiscal locations at Highlands, but to have Gracewood and Community Church in Mountain City and Blue Ridge and Galax, man, it expands our reach. And you know what, guys? It really benefits us as a church because we're not a threat anymore to Gracewood by one day planting a campus over there and stealing people from that church. That was never our intention ever to do that. But sometimes that happens. But now we're right in Lebanon and we're doing everything we can to help Gracewood reach their community as a strategic partner, Mountain City, Galax, and whoever else would want to be a partner with us. And I think through the pandemic, we're going to have more opportunities to do that with strategic partners. So that's exciting. Hey, any last comments that you want to make about uh, anything? Well, well, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the, a story about the... Um 
the partnership or the network that we have with our sure. pastors. I remember whenever I was going to make some invites and to ask a few folks that we already had some connections with, but you know, they were distant connections. I remember calling this one fellow in particular, he's a pastor in the region, and I called him up and and I just asked, I hadn't talked to him probably in a couple of years, and I said, hey, we're, we're thinking about starting um, a regional network. We're going to do it through Highlands, but I'm going to be leading it for now. And um, I would like for you to be part of it. And it was silence. I didn't hear anything. And I was like, oh no, I've, I've offended this guy or something like that. But then, then all of a sudden, I hear him speak with a broken voice. Basically, he, he was in tears. And he said, you know what, Tim? He said, I, I've been praying for something like this. I need this so much. And I want to thank you for inviting me. And we've had a couple, two or three of those stories. And as people have come and been part of the, of the gatherings that we've had, and after conversations, I'll get calls saying, hey, I'm just so thankful you're doing this. This is something that I've really needed. And I got to talk to, to so-and-so. You know, I got to talk to another pastor from another church, and we really connected and we bonded and we were able to, to talk through some things that I really needed. And we have similar stories and we're able to work through those things. And so now what's happening, a lot of pastors, they're not necessarily calling me, they're not necessarily calling you, but they're calling each other as well. And it's just so wonderful to see how a network can work as we humble ourselves, we come together for mutual care and concern, encouragement and challenge for one another. And then one of the things I think a lot too is if, if we can continue to work on this network of caring for pastors and loving them. I believe that healthy pastors are gonna, gonna create healthy churches in so many ways. And so if we can continue to invest in these pastors in these in these regional partnerships and things like that, I think that that what God will do is he will change the world. I think he will change the world through through men and women who are are sold out for him and who have the support, encouragement, and and all that behind them, pushing them forward to do the work that they believe God's called them to do. So I'm I'm really excited. I couldn't be more excited about what God's doing um, through the network and and through our churches. Um, it's been a difficult year. It's been an interesting year, but uh, God's doing some incredible things throughout the world, and we get to be part of it. Well, hey, guys, I wanted you to, uh, I know you know Pastor Tim. He's been here before. He's spoken at Highlands before. But uh, I also want you to understand this new relationship that he and Grace would have with Highlands so that we can all rejoice together. So he was fortunate to be able to come over and help me today. Would you give him a hand for his time and just appreciate all that he's doing on behalf of the kingdom of God? All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate you so much. Okay. <laughs> Well, man, you know, often what God does is you begin to think, how can you move the church forward? And how can you look at your community and your region? And how can you reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Because we've been given a mandate, right? I mean, God's challenged us through the person of Jesus Christ to reach every person in every town, every city, every nation, and every community around the world. That's the mandate that Jesus gave. And often, you know, I, I don't know how you guys are, but often you begin to think and you begin to dream, how does this happen? How can we fulfill a mandate quite like this? And, you know, you sort of offer your plans and your ideas to God. And what God does almost every time is he gives you his plan and his idea back. And it's so much better and bigger for his kingdom than it is for an individual church. And guys, the thing I'm so excited about our regional network is we're going to be able to keep pastors in the game. We're going to give them a safe place to come where they can share confidentially the struggles and the problems that they have. I've been in it for 35 years. And I just want to tell you something, man. I know that you guys think I only work on Sunday. I get that. But it's tough. And this year has really been tough. And yet... I think the communities and the regions in which we live depend much on the health of our churches. So if we have healthy churches, you know what? We have healthy families and we have healthy communities and we can have a healthy nation and a world. Jesus said, if my people will humble themselves and seek his face and pray, then he will hear from heaven and he will heal their land. You know, in a divided nation, we need more than any time in our history to have a united church. And I am so grateful of what God's doing at Highlands so that we can make a difference in our communities, 
We can make a difference in our region. We can make a difference in our world. So today, as we close, I just would love for you to help us make a difference. And we ask you to do three things, all right? We ask you to consider praying. If you're a child of God, you can pray. You can just ask God's blessing upon this opportunity. Pray that God would give me wisdom. Uh, keep me accountable. I'm doing something stupid. You know, I sure don't want to go out stupid. So pray for me. I need, I need you to pray for me. And then I would say we can all serve in some capacity. Now, you guys have taken this banner and you've ran with it. I mean, my goodness, you've served 43,000 people individually in our communities. And our communities are better for that. And you know what? You're better for that. Because when we go serve others, it makes us better. We think we're helping somebody else. And God uses that to help us. And then, again, some of you have been decimated through this pandemic season. You've lost your job. Uh, you've been diagnosed with the pandemic. You've got the virus. You've had the virus. You're still struggling. Uh, you know, financially, 2020 has been a wreck for you. Well, I don't want you to give. We want to help you. Let us know how we can help you. That's what the church is here for. Uh, we'll do everything we can to keep your head above water because we love you. We believe in you. You're going to get through this. And we're going to help you. Others of you, you've had just an incredible year. Uh, some of you have told me it's the best year you've ever had in your business. Well, I would say for you, would you seriously consider giving above what you normally give so that we might could go beyond where we normally go? And we're going to take a special offering up next week, the third week of our Difference Maker series on the 22nd. I hope you'll come if you attend a physical location, be prepared for that. Or, you know what, you can make a commitment. Those of you that are watching on TV and online today, you can look at your screen and you can find how you can digitally give to the Difference Maker offering. And man, I just want to say thank you for your generosity. You guys amaze me every time. You're incredible people. You have an incredible heart for God. And you know what? I'm convinced our best days as a church, not only locally, but regionally and the world, are ahead of us. And I'm excited. Man, I'll be glad to sort of close the door on 2020. I know you will be too. But we're going to get through this. There'll be a vaccine. There'll be a time where we can all get safely together again. I'd love for it to be Easter 2021. I don't know. Maybe I'm, you know, thinking outside the box there. But there'll be a time where you feel like you can come back to a physical location. And until that day, we're going to stay connected with you digitally. We're always going to have a digital presence because we know God can work through you in a digital format as well. So again, thanks for being a part of all that God's doing. Thank you for helping us and praying and serving and giving. And I want to pray with you right now as we come to a close. So would you pray with me? God, you're awesome. And when I hear uh, this story that we've talked about today, what you're doing in pastors' hearts and churches around our region, and that you give our church an opportunity to partner with these other churches and other pastors, that's humbling, God really is. And I pray, God, that we would all know here at Highlands just what an opportunity you've given us. That we might could be a strengthening partner for churches all across this region. Now, we've been doing that in the world for a long, long time. We have partners all over the world. But to be able to come back and really take care of pastors and churches and join with them to make a difference in their communities for the kingdom of God, that is awesome. Thank you for what you're doing. And I just always, I think of clergy malpractice, if I don't give you an opportunity, maybe you're here today, you're watching on television or online and you're not a believer in Jesus. I said, what in the world? <laughs> yeah, I mean, my goodness guys, hopefully the pandemic has caused all of you to at least question eternity. And this is what the Bible says. One day we're going to die. I hope it's not today, but one day 100% of us are going to die and we're going to spend eternity in one of two places, either heaven or hell. And the scripture is very clear. The only way you get to heaven is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. God knew we needed a savior and he sent us one. And Jesus became the sacrificial lamb, died on the cross and paid our sins in full. He paid a debt we could never pay. And today, maybe you would want to trust 
in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, he made it simple so even a child could understand. And this is what he says. If you'll but confess your sins, repent, that's turn from your sins, ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and forgive you and cleanse you, and then just say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. And I ask you to save me. Hey, you pray a prayer like that today, you know what? You've just been adopted for all eternity into God's family. And when you die on this side of eternity, you'll spend forever and ever in heaven with Him. And that is awesome. When you pray a prayer like that, Scripture says all heaven rejoices. We want to rejoice with you. Hey, let us know. There's ways online and there are ways on television. And here at our physical gatherings, just grab a staff person on your way out. Let me know. And we want to cheer you on. Because God continues to reach people, even in a season of uncertainty. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen.